That's my hero. Captain America, Chris Chilios. Never saw a guy love the game or more dedicated to the game ever like you, Charlie. Wow. Johnny and Matthew, the hockey world will never be the same. All my condolences to the Goodrow family. Thank you to my fellow inductees. This is an awesome to share this unbelievable honor with you. I love this game. It's been such a huge part of my life for most of my life, and this is the best way that I could finally find to end this chapter of my life. Growing up in the East Coast was a perfect opportunity to play high-level hockey. Winning two Bantam National Championships with the New Jersey Rockets gave me a taste of being a champion, and I loved it. I met my childhood best friend, Matt Mulgrave, at 10 years old in D.C., and we were inseparable. I remember the long car rides, the tournaments, and the never-ending battles of my dad's cigarette smoke coming from the front versus the nasty rear-end aroma from the back caused by an earlier Taco Bell stop. We all understand those. Matty, those are great days, weren't they, Matty? I know you're here and I love you, my friend. I want to take this opportunity to thank my mom and dad. Um, the never-ending rides, the early mornings and cold rinks, giving up good jobs, always being there for my brother. Trevor, they were truly an inspiration when we were young, and my dad's no longer here, but I'm sorry for somebody in the front row who's feeling a little extra pressure. My dad is sitting on your lap. There's no question about it. I want to thank my brother Trevor. It's not easy to be coming up in my footsteps behind. I've never seen a, a kid more humble more thankful, more respectful. You truly are the best younger brother a guy can have. I love you. Uh, my, fresh, my freshman year at high school at Thayer Academy, I met the soulmate of my hockey career. That's Tony Amonti. One of the most intense, competitive, and talented players I've ever played with. And we dominated high school hockey, winning two New England championships, and we went on to dominate the National Hockey League on two teams, Chicago and Philly. Tony and I could play blindfolded. Tony, I'm sorry for those tough years between us. It was all my fault. And I want you to know I love you more than anything in the world. Thanks, Scootsy. In 1988, the Blackhawks drafted me eighth overall in the first round. In surprising scene, I was only 5'10 and 150 pounds. I'm convinced the deciding factor of their pick came the night before the draft in the restaurant bathroom. Standing next to Mike Keenan at a urinal, he oddly asked me, you have any balls, kid? Feeling a bit uncomfortable because of the current situation. I said, enough to play for you. Thank goodness he didn't look over the divider. <laughs> I might not have been their first pick that year. <laughs> Turning pro out of high school was very scary, and I questioned whether I had what it took. Well, it got worse when I walked into the Hawks locker room and saw Al Secord naked. Scariest thing I've ever seen. Muscles on top of muscles, no teeth and hair everywhere. I went to go get changed in the bathroom stall. And that's no joke. Two weeks later in my first preseason game versus Minnesota, Mike Keenan grabbed me around the throat and threatened my entire NHL existence, whether I was going to hit somebody or not. Well, I did. And I did it a lot. And I loved it. Thank you, Mike, for bringing out the toughness I never knew I had and making me the player that I became. I love you, Iron Mike. I love you. I 
I would like to take this opportunity to apologize to the Wirtz family, especially Bill Wirtz. I wish I didn't let my ego get in the way of our contract talks, and you deserved more respect than I gave you. I hope you forgive me. Thank you, Rocky, for creating a dynasty. You left us too soon. And Danny, I'm sure you'll keep the great tradition going. I'm always here if you need me. Larms, Eddie, Shelley, Michelle Goulet, Dirk Graham, Troy Murray, Dennis Savard, one of the most exciting players of all time. Thank you for teaching me everything. <clears throat> Except playing poker. I'm still losing today at it. I'm terrible. Thank you to all the Chicago fans. I can't thank you enough for the way that you've brought me in and the way you've treated me for all these years. Thank you to the Hall Olympics and Charlie Henry and the Kedju family for bringing me into your home and teaching me the only five words that I know in French. I use them quite often. I had an amazing experience as a coyote. Mr. Burke, thank you for believing in me. Thank you to all the Coyote fans for your support, and I'm so sorry that you've recently lost your team. It makes me very sad, but good luck to the Utah Hockey Club. They're always part of my life. There I got to play with the legend himself, Keith Kachuk, the most intimidating, confident, and vocal person I've ever met. Well, other than myself, I guess to say. Big Walt, as we called him, had two rules. Give Walt the puck, and remember, give Walt the puck. Nobody challenged his teammates or took care of trainers better than Big Walt. And I'm very confident that someday soon he'll be standing at this podium doing the same thing that I'm doing. I love you, Walt. Found it! Inside joke. He's laughing right now. What a pleasure it was for me to go to Philly, to play in front of the fans that cheered exactly like I played with passion and emotion and pride, and sometimes physically. Mr. Schneider, thank you very much. You are one of the best owners it, of all time in any sport. Rex, Preems, Johnny LeClaire, Chris Terry, and Eshi, we should have won the Cup in 04. That was the best team that I've ever been on. Philly, I'm sorry we didn't bring a Cup back there, but I love you. Now off to L.A. Sorry, L.A. fans, I was terrible. It was awful. It was a terrible year, but to, to my defense, I was coming off of two major concussions and missing a year due to an NHL lockout, but I did get to play with arguably the best left winger of all time, and that's Luke Robitaille. Man, that guy could score goals, and he's one of the greatest men that I've ever met, and I'm lucky you know I love you too. Summer of 2007. My career came to a standstill. Four goals shy of 500. And no calls came on January 1st. No calls came on August 1st. Depression and heavy drinking had set in. I was in Idaho with my family and my angel called, Doug Wilson. My first NHL roommate and the GM of the San Jose Sharks. He asked me to come see him in San Jose, and I flew out the next day. He could see the desperation on my face while on the golf course. And he asked me if I'd like to come play for the Sharks. I said, hell yes. Okay, he said, but I have three rules. One, you have to play for the league minimum. Two, no media, unless we ask you to which was very hard. And number three, no alcohol. I dumped the beer I had in my hand out and immediately shook his hand. And I scored my 500th goal three months later. Thank you, Doug Wilson, for being a great friend but more important for being a friend when I needed it the most. I would not be up here, and I don't mean up here, if it wasn't for you. You truly saved my life.
Thank you to Sharks fan for letting me retire with respect and grace. Jumbo, the second best playmaker of all time, behind 99, I think, and the most fun teammate I've ever had. I can't wait to see you up on this stage soon. To all the trainers, the real heroes, you never get the credit you all deserve. Hang our sweaty, smelly jock straps at two in the morning while us spoiled brats are sleeping away at the Four Seasons. You guys are the true champions, and for every single one of them and your hard work, I say thank you. I want to say thank you to my family. I have the two greatest children in the history of the world, Brett and Brandy. I can't thank you enough for being two beautiful, upstanding, loyal, hardworking children that support me through good and bad, thick and thin, have the most character of anybody I've ever seen. I could only wish to be as good as you two. I'm so proud of you. Thank you for always believing in me. But I really wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the strength of my wife. People call me a Hall of Famer. I'm not the Hall of Famer in my family. My wife, Tracy, is the Hall of Famer in our family. You have been able to do the hardest job in the world and that's be the wife of, of myself. <laughs> the hardest job in the world. And you have done it with grace, loyalty, honor, integrity, and patience. You have taught me what unconditional love is. And I can't thank you enough for being that role model for our two children. For me, and keeping our family together through thick and thin. And I promise to love you forever. Thank you for being you. I love you, Tracy. Thank you to all my friends being here tonight. Thank you for the fans all over the world. I loved playing in front of you. I loved lifting you out of, the, out of your seat. I loved having you yell at me and boo me. It was the greatest compliment you can ever have. See, because without the fan, we would just be a local hockey league in a local rink with a designated beer guy. Thank you, fans, for coming out and supporting the best game in the world. And I just want to leave everybody with one more thing. Earlier this year, I had a light bulb moment. Some say a higher power moment. I realize I'm not special because I played in the National Hockey League. What makes one special is how one chooses to live their life, a life of honesty, loyalty, and integrity. With all we have, we have lots of decisions in life. And there are consequences to every decision, some good, some bad. I've learned you have to be present in these moments. You have to stop, analyze, and decide, keeping the ones that you love and the ones that love you in mind with every decision. Better, better decisions will not only make your life better, but I think it will also make the world a better place. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the Hall of Fame. Thank you to all my friends. This is a great way to end this chapter of my life, and I couldn't be more humble and more grateful. Thank you.